That Tondiri stands as Kenya's solitary urban highland wetland, serving as the lifeline for Nairobi water supply. Nestled in the peri urban landscape rich in agriculture, this inland wetland grapples with a multitude of challenges from urbanization and population growth to infrastructure development and intense farming. There has been an influx in population where Nairobi has been uh, pouring over its excess uh, population to Kikuyu and uh, the increase in population has caused a lot of pressure on the wetland because there is need of uh, more water, there is need for food uh, and then there is need for place uh, to settle. And that is the essence uh, of the Friends of Hondiri organization that has come in to try to conserve. Established in 2016, Friends of Ondiri Wetland embarked on a clear mission to rehabilitate and restore the Ondiri Wetland through sustainable conservation efforts. Around the swamp, <coughs> we have done deforestation still of indigenous trees. Before, we had uh, exotic trees, which was drawing a lot of water from the swamp. We were able also to talk with the Water Resource Authority through Water Resource Users Association, who I sit in the Monitoring and Evaluation Committee. And uh, we did the pegging for the wetland, and we fenced the whole of it, 3.3 kilometers. As part of our mission with Inuka, we sought to explore the methods employed in this conservation endeavor and discover avenues for mutual coexistence, particularly through sustainable agricultural practices that could uplift the surrounding community. For our project beneficiaries, the focus was on NBS in agriculture, delving into the policy landscape, engaging with communities, and leveraging the wetland to enhance the agricultural practices. So the purpose of us uh, carrying out this project here at Friends of Ondere Wetland is so that we can use this as a hub for education, especially to the locals and the greater area, or that is uh, the Kiambu region, uh, whereby we've lost very, very many important species, and even worse, many people don't even know which species these are. We hope to, uh, to establish an education hub where people are able to learn about all these three species. They're able to learn about wetland information, not just wetlands, the Ondiri wetland, but uh, the wetland information that we have globally, because one of the things that Friends of Ondiri is lobbying is to have uh, uh, this um, Ondiri wetland recognized as a, a wetland of international uh, importance. This is actually called a learning hill, because we have so many institutions of learning. We have two universities, uh, within a radius of a kilometer from here. There are two universities, we have two national high schools, we have a teacher's college, we have numerous uh, colleges, we have numerous high schools and primary schools. And uh, therefore, there are so many students. In fact, within a radius of uh, two kilometers, you can find more than 10,000 students. Yeah? And therefore, the botanic garden that is being put up by Inuka is going to be a very important learning center. Yes, and will, but it but doesn't grow very big actually. It's like a shrub. Yes. Yeah, you it's a shrub. And it, this one will be grown spale karibu na Maui. It loves rocky areas. Kama si hivo. It loves hard you, you, It grows on the forest margin. Yes. Where we are standing today is our modern botanical garden. Here we have different species of trees. When they grow, we want to propagate the seeds and sell to the farmers and the communities around uh, before they mature because most of them they will take up to 50 years to mature we want to do agroforestry where we shall be planting daniyas and we plant spinach so that when we are taking care of the spinach and the daniya we are taking care of the trees around we got a first-hand feel of the experience lessons best practices and the challenges that come with it we want to take care of the lives uh, of the lives around because we are not uh, ignorant that uh, these are people and we need to take care of people even as we do 
a conservation. One of the key things that Inuka is focusing on is nature-based solutions, that we are bringing solutions which are able to take care of the environment, uh, that is the biodiverse, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the ecosystem, and people all the, uh, all the same. So by doing this, we want to take care of the livelihoods of people. We do not want to evacuate them, but we want to feed them with the correct information that will help them to be partners in conservation. Our visit also provided an opportunity to conclude our work in storytelling, empowering youth to delve deeper into the art of crafting impactful narratives. Why is it important for us to see them and go through the background? Because we want to show your connection with your environment. Whether this butterfly is alive or dead lies entirely in your hands. Africa is the butterfly. Our stories are the butterfly. So how we showcase Africa, how we showcase our stories lies entirely we are the ones who are going to decide whether we are going to tell, we are going to show Africa, our butterfly, as dead or alive. Equipped with storytelling tools and techniques, the beneficiaries are now poised to enhance their work, tell their climate stories, expanding their reach, grit and impact. Part of the activities that the Inuka Africa team and our friends of Fondiri is going to do is to restore the degraded areas so that the soil that has been running down the river can be held together and also through community awareness campaigns that is the Ondiri Conservation Run, it is the third edition. So the event is geared towards helping people understand what conservation is, why they need to be involved and the problems that are happening here. What better way to culminate our visit than by supporting and co-organizing the Ondiri Wetland Run? As an annual event that serves as a precursor to the World Wetlands Day on February 2nd, the run unites communities and stakeholders in a collective effort to raise awareness about the significance of conserving the wetland. The run not only highlights the importance of wetlands but also sheds light on the challenges they face, prompting a call to action for conservation. By bringing people together, the run aims to foster appreciation for wetland and mobilize support for its preservation. We are trying to create a case for the young people and show the world that young people, given the resources, the mentorship, uh, the support, uh, resources, they are able to make a case in conservation, co lead in solutions and more importantly help the country expedite the realization of our nationally determined contributions, restoration goals and most importantly our vision 2030 for this decade of uh, ecosystem restoration and climate action. When we are organizing the wetland uh, marathon, we are bringing people together to make them understand because the run is meant to raise awareness and that is one of the pro programs that we have embarked on so seriously. We want the community to understand why are we calling them to conserve because you can't just tell people come let's do this, come let's do this. They need to understand why. So why are we conserving? When we conserve on the wetland, we are restoring biodiversity. When we conserve on the, on the wetland, we are dealing with the issue of climate change. When all of us come together to conserve on the wetland, we are taking care of pollution, especially when it comes to pesticides and um, the kind of fertilizers that we've been using around. So we want the people to be empowered with the right knowledge. The visit to Ondiri, uh, our wetlands, has been quite useful to us. We've been able to see the application of NBS in agriculture. We've also been able to learn about storytelling, the different techniques. This is quite useful for us in terms of documenting and uh, reporting our work. So we're able to use whatever equipment we have, our phones, to be able to tell our stories and have a more impactful way of communicating the work that we do. 
also learned through nature-based solutions that apart from doing the actual restoration, we have to introduce sustainable way or other means of livelihoods for the community. Because only planting is not enough to solve the issue of degradation or unemployment and all other issues. I also learned that conservation is more than planting new trees. I decided not to do any farming near there, near the water. So I just let the glass grow from my land, and grow and uh, not interfere with the water at all. And uh, many people used to come and ask me why you are not uh, tilling that down there. Those people from opposite side. But I say no, I don't want to spoil it. But I didn't know have, have much knowledge that that time and because now I know what is the importance of not messing up with the swamp. Udiri swamp is a coolant of this area and uh, it is one of uh, the main things that uh, helps us to do farming here because uh, the soil is usually very saturated. To me this represents a big opportunity for young people to work with their communities on ways they can actually work with nature as opposed to against it and at the same time actually encouraging the adoption of sustainable agricultural approaches to give life lose, livelihoods for their communities, contribute to climate action and as well as contribute to biodiversity net gain. Today we have also visited Brackenhurst which is a very beautiful uh, place where a lot of uh, indigenous trees are being uh, planted and we have been able to visit a botanical garden and interacted with some of the workers there and also have been visited at Boretum and see some of the indigenous trees that are being planted here. This is very important again in our work at the Kenyan coast because in, apart from planting the mangrove we need to have some indigenous trees that are integrated with the mangrove and also supporting the agriculture and nature based work in the Kenyan coast. I do hope that out of all these trainings, the uh, exposures, the youth in this um, program are going to take up a lot of these skills, mold them into uh, the case specific for their communities and actually deploy them to further impact their communities, enhance nature-based solutions across the ecosystems, but finally help Kenya to achieve our Vision 2030 and our NDC commitments of curbing carbon emissions by 32% by the year. Beyond this final visit, our focus will now shift on the impact the Inuka project has had on the project beneficiaries, their respective organizations, their communities and landscapes. But before that, what objectives was the Inuka project aiming to achieve? Stay tuned to find out. <laughs>